What's going on today, guys? Um, I'm here with my dad. Uh, he was in the last video that I had to end up getting rid of because the file corrupted. and I jinxed it. Yeah, he jinxed it. So we're going to try again today uh, <laughs> or with a different video. Uh, so today, basically, what we're doing is we're building the gear for our car to go, to go into card that we're going to run this year. Um, the reason I'm making this video is dad here is pretty much what I would call an expert. He won't claim that, but he, he really knows what he's doing when he's building these things. Um, he puts them together real nice. Uh, there's been a couple of our friends that have run gears that he's built and they have won, they've won King of the Carolinas. Um, and he, we've helped out some other people and it's worked really well. And if something broke on their car, it wasn't a gear, it was something else. So that's always a good thing. <laughs> Um, so basically I'm going to let him do all the talking today because he knows what he's talking about. Um, he's going to show you kind of how to build the gear and how to set up the gear, a few tips and tricks that he's kind of, you know, cause he's built a bunch of these, so he knows them. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it I think it'll be a pretty good video. You know, like I said, you're the one in charge today. You're the one talking, so. <laughs> Try not to mess it up. Yeah. But, uh, but anyways, um, that's kind of what the plan is for today. Um. Uh, you know, we may not show you everything, but he'll definitely like talk about it just because some of this stuff can get kind of repetitive and we just don't want to waste a bunch of footage on the same thing over and over. Um, he's going to kind of show you some of the tools that he has, um, you know, and just a few methods he uses to help get these things put together. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started and I will see you guys at the end of the video. Good morning, everybody. Uh, we're going to do a video this morning uh, about uh, assembling and setting up a nine inch Ford uh, rear axle gear. Uh, they're pretty simple. Uh, it's one of the toughest, most reliable components on the race car. Uh, these things have a long history, uh, but I just want to show you some of the things we do to put them together and maybe you'll learn something maybe you didn't know about before and uh, maybe with the help of the video you can, can do one yourself. But uh, just wanted to show you some of the tools you'd need uh, to set one of these up. Uh, they're not terribly hard to work on and the tools that you need are uh, relatively inexpensive. Uh, the first thing that probably is the most handy thing is a fixture to hold this gear. This thing's pretty heavy. It's cast iron. Uh, I made this out of just some scrap around the shop. Uh, I can't turn it all the way over right now because I got some things loose. But I've got that to where I can pivot it and I can flip this all the way over if I want. And I'll do that whenever we get ready to put the pinion shaft into gear. So it just makes it a little easier to work on. It's not rolling around on a table. Plus you need to be able to measure uh, some things, uh, torque the bolts that go to it and that kind of thing. Uh, the next thing you'll need working on these to set backlash, I'm sure you've heard that, that term, is a, a good quality dial indicator uh, this one's just a one inch range, uh, has a magnetic flexible mount. You can put it in just about any location, uh, locking it down and uh, we'll show you how to use that in a little bit. Okay everybody, just a few more of the tools. Again, uh, basic hand tools, sockets, torque wrench uh, to torque the bolts. Uh, tool, another tool to measure with, just a simple dial caliper to measure thickness of shims uh, when you're setting pinion preload and um, and the uh, some of the adjustments on the on the gear. Another tool uh, I actually purchased this. Uh, it's the tool to adjust the side adjuster nuts on the differential, and I'll show you a little bit more about that in a little bit. It just fits in the holes here. Uh, you can use a hammer and a punch and all that kind of stuff, but this is much better. Uh, but just, just basic hand tools is all you need. Uh, another thing, and we'll get to this towards the end of the video, is marking compound. Uh, this is what we'll use to mark the gear to check the pattern. And you'll hear me say a couple times during this video that pattern is everything, and there's, there's a reason for that. But this is what, it's just a marking grease uh, that we'll use to uh, check the, check the, the Opinion how, how it, it's, it's engaged in a ring gear. Uh, so that's pretty much it as far as tools. Again, you don't need a whole lot of uh, special things, just some things to measure with mainly. So 
we'll uh, get started here in just a little bit starting to put it together okay I'm gonna talk about uh, the Ford 9 inch rear axle here a little bit uh, the reason this axle is so popular uh, number one it's a very reliable component it's easy to work on uh, it was made from 1957 to 1986 so there's there's millions of them out there the aftermarket produces a lot of parts for them so they're just they're just they're a lot like the small block Chevrolet. It was introduced in 1955 and you see where it went. So this axle is pretty, pretty much similar to that. Uh, there's tons of parts everywhere out there for them. Almost all the stock car divisions that don't use a quick change rear axle use a nine inch Ford. Uh, even the, the uh, NASCAR Cup Series and all their cars, they use a same setup, got a little better components, but it's the same setup. Uh, so it's a very reliable unit and uh, look pretty trouble free uh, rarely have any problem with it it's one of the toughest things you'll have on your race car so we're going to show you a little bit about how to set one up and and make it reliable make it fast and uh, we'll go from there okay before we begin assembly and and setting up the gear a couple of things we want to do uh, as far as prep work obviously we want to clean it up very well uh, one of the things that i like to do is take a burr on a die grinder and clean up all and it may be hard to see but clean up all the casting marks. This is cast iron housing. Um, that, that reduces the possibility of cracks forming at the, at the casting marks. Uh, it also lets the oil flow in and around the, the housing and the gear a little better. Uh, anytime the oil shears across a, a sharp edge, it creates heat, so we can eliminate some of that. Uh, one of the other places I do it is right in here in the pinion support so that oil can get through those holes you can see where I've dressed it up, uh, and it just lets the oil flow through there a little better. Um, the other prep work would be checking all the bolt holes. I, I run a tap through there, make sure the threads are good, and that we get they're nice and smooth. Once it's clean, and this may sound a little backwards, I look it over good for cracks. Uh, the reason I wait till the end, I, even after doing all this, because some of the cracks you can't see if it's dirty. So we get it cleaned up good. Uh, one of the places that the Ford 9 inch will have a, a problem is right here on this rear pinion support bearing. Occasionally you will get a crack in here. So we wanna look at that good. Uh, one uh, gear that I worked on had a crack here and it also had a crack up here in the pinion support. And we'll see that when I flip it over. But could have been something going on there or maybe some loose bearings or, or some misalignment or something, I don't know. But anyway, not not many uh not too much trouble with them also on the gears with a high numerical gear like a 600 or 620 or something like that this has to be ground right here to clear the ring gear uh, if you get a big uh, numerical gear sometimes it will hit right here on this bearing support and you just have to grind that down for a little bit of clearance right there uh, but other than that once it's clean uh, we're ready to assemble it I uh, like to lay out our components uh, and get ready to assemble and uh, we'll go from there. Okay everybody, we're going to start the assembly of this gear. We've got all our parts and tools assembled. Everything's cleaned up. Uh, just want to show you a couple of things that I do. Uh, on the pinion support, you've got two bearing races in here. They're both the same size. A Daytona pinion will have a much bigger bearing here, just for information. The two bearings that they're on the pinion shaft itself, what I like to do instead of pressing and trying to force these things on, is what I'll do, I'll freeze the pinion shaft itself. The back bearing, I will put in a toaster oven and get it up to about 325 degrees for about 15 or 20 minutes. And then usually that bearing will just drop on. If you'll notice that this bearing is loose, what I will do is dress the pinion shaft I want this bearing to slide fairly easily when I'm adjusting the preload on the bearings uh, instead of having to press it on and off because sometimes you can get a false reading that way. So that's what I like to do. The bearing races, I will heat the housing and put the bearing races or cups as they're called in the freezer. And normally after about 15, 20 minutes, you can just drop them in. There's no, no hammering and beating on and all that sort of thing. Same thing on the spool bearings here. This is the cut, the outer race. I'm not gonna pull this part apart, but I'll freeze the spool, the center part, 
and I'll heat the carrier bearings and uh, usually they'll slide right on. Just easy, uh, takes a lot of uh, lot of work and risk damage in the bearings. These bearings are expensive, so you know you wanna take care of them when you're putting them on. Okay, we're ready to set the pinion up, preload on the bearings. Uh, talked to you a minute ago about how I install the bearings. Just wanted to show you a little bit about what we're doing here. This bearing here will go in, will go in, and, and this way, this the, and works on the races inside the pinion support. How we adjust this preload is right here. You'll see a spacer and some shims. What we're looking for is about six inch pounds of rolling torque on these bearings. If I put this together and it's too tight, then I need more shim here to spread these bearings out. If it's too loose, then I need to take some shim out or measure the shim, put in a thinner shim to close it up. And that's all it is. Um, it's nothing nothing uh, complicated about it. It is sometimes a trial and error thing. So uh, sometimes you have to do this two or three times. Notice I like to put the shim between the spacer and the back bearing. I think it I think it sits in there a little better instead of when this, this bearing's moving back and forth. So we'll slip this together goes just like this. You'll notice there's a groove here. That's for an O-ring seal that seals this to the housing. I'll leave that out until I get ready to do the final assembly. Uh, it just makes it a little bit easier. So there we go there. What I like to do at this point, so this thing's a little bit heavy and sometimes hard to hold, I'll clamp the yoke in my vise. Put my outside bearing in here. There's a shield washer there. And you'll also notice that I don't have the seal in it yet. I won't do that until final assembly because I want to measure the preload without the seal. I just want the preload of the bearing. I've got a nut that I've run a tap through and made it real smooth. Uh, it doesn't lock down. Uh, normally the, the nut you'll use will have sealer on there and it'll be able to lock the thread. I did it this way because I'm taking this thing on and off sometimes. Now I've already set the preload on these bearings. This one's real smooth. I've got about four, maybe five inch pounds of rolling torque on here. Uh, so this one's actually set up just to save some, some time on the video. But if this was too tight, I would add some shims. If it was too loose, I'd take out some shims or put in some thinner ones. So uh, very simple, actually, uh, but this is a critical component because this is where all the horsepower and RPM come through this rear axle. So our pinion set up, ready to go and go into the housing, uh, and then we'll move next and go to the carrier. Okay, we're ready to set up the preload on the spool bearings, carrier bearings, if you want to call it that. Uh, we've already installed everything. We've installed the ring gear onto the spool. Uh, a little shout out here to ARP bolts. I, I like to use ARP bolts on the ring gear. They're very high quality. Uh, they also have a, a compound that helps you torque it. Uh, but we're ready to set this up. These bearings typically, uh, you want to have one to two, maybe three thousandths clearance on it, depending on the bearings. But how you adjust that is with these, car uh, these adjusting nuts on each side of the, the bearings. Uh, if I want to put more preload on it, I just tighten this up, just like a bolt, and it just squeezes in on the bearings. Uh, and we want to, like I said, we want to keep that around one to two thousandths preload. Uh, again, I try to build these things as loose as I possibly can, just to eliminate uh, drag and, and wasting horsepower. So uh, I try to build them as, loose, you know, as, as free rolling as possible. Uh, You'll notice I've got a red mark right here. Once I've got my preload set, I will mark that nut, and, I'll, and you may not be able to see it, but where this cap bolt's on there, I mark that. And that gives me a reference, because when I get ready to set the backlash on this gear, I'm either gonna be moving it this way or this way, and I wanna move both of these nuts the same amount. If I turn this one a half around this way, I want to turn this one in half around. So that mark uh, gives me a reference so that I don't have to reset the preload on those bearings. And if I need to back up, I've, I've found out by trial and error that one hole 
moving one hole gives you about one to two thousandths of preload so you can you can actually measure that if you want but uh, once that's set and I've, I've got the caps off of it uh, just to just to be able to see it these caps when they go on should go on easily and the bolts should line right up and screw right in and the reason I say that is they, they're made for one side you can't switch this one on this side they they're, they're fitted for one side and when you take one apart be sure you mark it um, because your threads won't engage correctly and then your bolts won't go in so you don't want that but each each cap goes on I replaced the bolts with good quality uh, grade 8 hardware uh, so that uh, got a good bolt in there uh, and that's pretty much it and then this is all set up we're ready to put the pinion in okay we're ready to install the pinion and the pinion support in our housing uh, one of the things this is one of the adjustments on the gear uh, not only the backlash and the bearing preloads but the depth of this pinion into the ring gear and these shims are what control that what I generally do is I start off with about a fifteenth thousandth thick shim and just go from there and check the pattern. I mentioned earlier in the video about pattern is everything. Uh, there are a ton of tools out there to set these rear gears up and they work well, but honestly, pattern is everything and I'll show you that in a little bit. Pattern is, is the contact that that pinion gear is making with this ring gear. Uh, that's the critical thing here and that's what these shims and adjustments do. So. We're going to start off with a 15,000 shim just to get started. We've got our pinion. We assembled it over there a few minutes ago, and it will just slide in. One of the things we run into with the, the high numerical ratios, 600s, 583s, things like that, is this gear sometimes will not slide in without moving the carrier over, and then you move it back. That's why I put those reference marks on those adjuster nuts so I can go back to the same preload if I have to move the gear over. Again, uh, new grade eight hardware for everything. Just keeping, keeping all the pieces together. I would obviously torque those on final assembly, but for the sake of the video, just saves a little bit of time. So let's flip our gear back over and what we're going to set now is backlash. I'm sure you've heard that term. Backlash is the clearance between the pinion gear and the ring gear. And if you can listen on the video, you can hear that and I can tell you right now that's a lot. We don't want that. Uh, you got to have a certain amount of clearance and backlash, but you don't want too much. Uh, biggest reason with too much is as you're on and off the throttle especially in a race car uh, you're creating an impact every time you get on that throttle and and you can cause damage to the gear so we want to keep that fairly tight I like to shoot for eight to ten thousandths uh, but again if I have to vary from that a little bit and I get a better pattern I'll go with the pattern the pattern is everything so I keep uh, saying that but it truly is <coughs> I'm going to try to get this to where you can see what I'm doing. Uh, I don't know if that's going to block the video. But it just this is just a magnetic mount. And I'm going to set up my dial indicator here on one of the ring gear teeth. And I'm going to turn it to where you can see it. The movement of that needle is how much backlash we got. I'm going to zero it so you can kind of see. We have a lot here. We've got uh, about 55,000, so we're about uh, 48,000 is too much. So as we rock that back and forth, you can see, see what's going on. Okay, we got a little too much backlash, so we want to change that. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is move the ring gear uh, closer to the pinion to take up some of that gap. So what I want to do here is loosen this adjusting nut and I'm gonna go about a half around because that's a good bit of backlash and again that's why I put the marks there so I can keep a reference and then I'm going to tighten the one on this side and that'll move everything over now let's see what we've got 
we reduced it a little bit about uh, we're down to about 32,000 so we need a little bit more And again, the marks help me keep my preload the same as when I originally set it. Okay, now we're down to about 14, 14 thousandths. I think we need a little more. We want to get this thing set up good. I'm going to go all the way around. Now in reality, between checking this, I would retorque these bolts to make everything the same. I'm not doing that for the sake of the video, but I would retorque that because it does change it a little bit. Now I've got it too much, so we got to back up. I didn't mean to move the whole gear. Now we've got about roughly 10 thousandths there. We've got about, actually that's about eight. I would leave that there if my pattern was good when I test it. So uh, that's the way we set it up. And that's, that's, uh, that's all there is to it. Uh, again, this will change as you change the depth of the pinion, but this is the first step right here. So now we'll move on to checking the pattern on the gear contact and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, we're gonna check the pattern on our gear contact now again. I talked about the, the marking compound. It's just a, I don't know what's in it. I'm maybe afraid to ask. You can use grease, but grease tends to smear. Uh, this works a lot better because it doesn't smear. But all we're gonna do is paint three or four teeth here on the ring gear. Just want to make sure they're covered good. Doesn't take a lot. In ideal practice, you would check this in two to three places around the ring gear, but for the sake of the video, I'm just going to do one. Uh, you could possibly have a spool that was a little bit off and you get a different reading. Now, what I like to do, what I'm going to do is rotate the gear through its normal uh, direction of rotation. Uh, I'm going to use this brass punch over here on the back of the ring gear to put some drag on it uh, to simulate some of the load of the car. Okay, now you can see the contact pattern. And I'm going to get a little something here to point with. And I hope you can see that in the video, but you can see here on these teeth where the marking compound was, was wiped away. What we're looking for is about in the middle of the tooth, which this way looks good. Uh, I would like to be a little farther in. Uh, this is not bad. This would run well. But what I'd like to do is put a thinner shim in here, move this pinion in this way, and show you how it changes on here a little bit. So uh, I'm going to pull it apart, put a different shim in it, we'll remark it, and let you see how that works. Okay. We've made an adjustment to our pinion depth. Uh, before, our contact pattern was out in this area, the, the biggest part of it, which was really pretty good. It wasn't bad. But what I did, just to demonstrate what the shims do on the pinion, on the, uh, pinion support, is I took the shim out, and if you'll notice, what it essentially did is move the pinion farther in to the center line of the gear. Now you can see the contact pattern is more down in here. So it just moved it in. Uh, I will probably put a little thinner shim in this particular gear to move it back out a little bit, but I just want to demonstrate what those shims do as far as changing the pattern. Again, the pattern this way is good. Uh, we had to reset the backlash. When you move it in, it tightens up the backlash, so I had to back it off. So it's just a combination of the two, but this gear is going to set up very well. Uh, should be trouble free and uh, you know give us good service. Now that we've got everything set up, backlash, uh, bearing preloads, pinion preloads, and, and whatnot, uh, we're ready for final assembly. There's not a lot left. Uh, I'll go back and, and make sure I torque all these bolts. 
Uh, the ringer bolts have been torqued. The, uh, these torqued, I think, to 85 foot-pounds. Once you get those on, there's a lock that goes on the carrier adjusting nuts or bearing adjusting nuts. That'll get a little bit of Loctite, and that, that keeps that from moving. Uh, and that's pretty much all the gear. Uh, the pinion, I'll take back apart, install the seal. Uh, one thing I'm using now, and I've, I've noticed a little difference in, is a low drag seal. Uh, the normal seals are pretty tight on this yoke, uh, but the low drag seal uh, doesn't drag quite as much on the yoke, so cutting that friction out. Uh, new O-ring here to seal the pinion support in the housing. Uh, get her together, uh, be ready to go. Uh, we generally use a synthetic oil. Uh, synthetic oils don't tend to heat up as much as mineral oils, so they're a good choice. There's a lot of them out there. The Lucas products are good. Uh, Redline, there's there's a number of good lubricants out there, uh, but the synthetics are highly recommended just because they don't heat up as much. Uh, but that's the 9-inch Ford. Uh, it's a simple, reliable unit, fairly easy to fix, fairly inexpensive to fix, lots of parts around, uh, easy to work on, uh, and I hope this video has been some help. If you want to work on one yourself, I uh, hope that'll help you. Uh, if you got one you want us to work on, we'll be glad to help you out, or we'll walk you through one. Uh, glad to try to help out anybody out there. So many people have helped us, and we just try to give a little bit back. <clears throat> All right. What are you doing? Leave left over. <laughs> I don't know. That's a wedding stuff. <laughs> All right, you ready? I'm ready. Give it a second so I can cut it. <sighs> it's easier to cut this way. All right, serious All right. face. You ready? Right. You don't do binds. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Uh, Set it on the radio to cap. Yeah. I tried. It fell in. <laughs> Scooch just a hair to the left. Hair to the left. left. Yeah, your left. Oh, <laughs> Not stage left. Exit right. <laughs> Direction. Direction. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm ready. All right. All right, so guys, that pretty much wraps up the video today. Uh, huge thanks to Dad here for going through that gear. And I know this was more of a how-to than like the normal vlogs and whatnot, but it's really a critical part of your car and you know we thought we could maybe share just a little bit of our knowledge that you know well his knowledge that he has about these gears uh we did have a little mishap earlier like he said before um one of the the, the dial indicator the point the, the on point it. on it actually fell and we couldn't find it so we went into panic mode thinking it went down in the gear had to take part of the gear back apart but anyways we found it everything's good um upcoming videos uh, we're going to do one. We had a rule change for our class. Uh, we can now run an aluminum intake, so we're going to swap the cast iron one off and put uh, like a kind of a box stock aluminum one back on, but it's just better. It's not as heavy as that cast iron one. Uh, so there will be a video on that. Um, we're going to be doing some work to the rear axle as well. Uh, we'll make that a video. We'll be installing the new gear. We already have gear in the car, but we kind of just got that to get it rolling because we had some other things to do with the car. Um, but yeah, we're going to be working on trailing arms, bushings. Um, I think we might even try to squeeze in working on our front suspension, at least checking that. So uh, that's pretty much it. Um, the season starts middle of February, so that's what we're kind of banking at. we got a bunch of practice sessions, and we will definitely be making videos on that kind of what goes on through the day, you know, into, you know, the practice session and, you know, coming home. So uh, I'm pretty excited about those videos. But, yeah, um, as always, thank you guys so much for watching, um, especially thanks to Dad here for being a part of the video. Um, but yeah, I try just, not to corrupt this one. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, with that being said, thank you so much, guys, and as always, I will see you in the next video.